In this video, I am joined by FPL expert FBL Salah, who is going to be building his free hit team for Game Week 29 live for us. Abdul, pleasure to have you on, mate. I'm really excited to see what your team is looking like for the upcoming gaming. Obviously, the free hit chip, only use it once per year. Mm. I'm on it as well. A lot of people out there are also going to be on it this season. So yeah, very, uh, very interested to see who you're going with. Let's just let's just start from, from the back. Who's going to be your goalkeeper? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. So I've got um, Flecken and Cels in goal. Um, so okay. I think I'm, I'm going to play uh, Flecken um, and I have Cels there, uh, the, the Nottingham Forest goalkeeper as, as a backup. I mean, I, I can't see many, you know, clean sheets. You know, I, I'll be surprised if you even get one clean sheet this week, you know, across the four fixtures. But Brentford do have the highest chance of a clean sheet around about 27%. So it makes sense to go for the goalkeeper from that team. Yeah, it's so hard. the thing is with all these games, they're so hard to call, aren't they? Especially for defenders. And for people that are not free hitting, I think it does make sense to, to kind of just lead the defence and see what happens. But yeah, for us, mm, for sure, sure there's some upside there in, in some picks. It's just going to be really hard to pick out who those players are going to be. Yeah, yeah I think, I think, I think you'll see from the defender picks, but I think the best thing to do for the defence is just go for the defenders who have the highest attacking threat. Um, is what makes the most sense to me, really. Okay, let's get on to them. Who have you got? Uh, so I've got I've got Roslav uh, from from Bentford. So I'm going to go with a double up in uh, for, for the Bentford defence. However, that's only because Regulon seems like he's injured. If he's fit, you know, if Tom's Frank comes out and says, you know, Regulon's going to play against Burnley, then then he'll be in instead. But obviously, Roslav is, you know, the next best option for Regulon if Regulon is out, Um, if you look at the attacking threat. And, you know, again, as I said, I mean, I, I don't expect a clean sheet for Brentford, but because they do have the highest clean sheet odds, um, you know, it's just the, kind of the best out of bad bunch, really, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, for people that maybe don't know who who Roslev is, can you just talk about his position in the team, why, why he has potentially some attacking upside? Um, Well, he's just, he, he, he does play as like a, a, a wing back. And I mean, he, he's got one one goal this season, I believe. But as I said, it's just one of those where he, he is he is the next best option after Regulon. Again, I'm not expecting him to get attacking returns, but you know he he is he's he's got the highest clean sheet odds and he's got some attacking threat there. So just it's really just kind of process elimination. But I am hoping that um, that Regulon will be back for because I did Thomas Frank did say that. No, he will be back for Burnley, but it was a hamstring injury, so I'm not kind of, you know, putting my hopes too much on that. But again, if he's out, then Roslav will be the guy that comes in. And I was looking at, um, yeah, he has got one goal, one goal and two assists this season, which okay. is, you know, the, the next best, you know, the highest returns after after Regulon. I, one thing that I'm thinking of, to be fair, I don't know if it's a little bit too risky, but um, starting Regulon and then having Roslav first sub, because if he, you know, if he is injured properly, He's either not going to be. I mean, this is this is if we don't get team news right. If he's injured, I don't think he's going to play any part in the game. But yeah. you do have that little risk that maybe he he's, he's okay, and then you know it's not fit for ninety, but he comes on for the last twenty or something. That is the risk. But I think the issue with that is um, the issue with that is that you would because you want three bent. Oh, you so triple you, up. That's, yeah, you'd be you'd be tripling up. Yeah, you'd be tripling up on, on Brentford. So you're you're going to want Tony. Great point. You're going to want the flag in, so yeah, it's, it's going to leave you kind yeah. of short there. But yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good idea in theory, but if we were allowed four Brentford players, yeah. I guess you'd have to lose Fleck in, which, yeah, I don't know. The goalkeepers yeah, are, which... are, are close, but uh, not ideal. All right, who have you got next? Yeah. Um, so I've got Pedro Porro. I think he's totally nailed uh, in my team. I mean, I think he's got decent, well, I wouldn't say decent, um, you know, clean sheet odds, but, you know, comparatively, you know, to the rest of the fixtures. But He's probably the, the one who has the most upside this game week um, in terms of attacking threat. Um, so he's he's totally nailed in my team. I think he'll be, a, you know, probably the most popular defender uh, this game week. Yeah. And to be fair, Tottenham are probably the best team this week that, that have a fixture. Yeah. And they did just keep a, you sure. know, a really solid clean sheet in the last game. Obviously, there was a red card there. But yeah. nonetheless, they they really did kind of stifle Villa for, for the game before that red card. Mm-hmm. So I don't, yeah, and you, you saw we got a bonus point as well. Obviously, so good for baseline, baseline bonus. Yeah. We know this, so yeah, yeah I, I would have sure. loved to swerve him and go for like a triple Spurs midfield or attack, but I just don't think, I just don't think that's that's sensible. Yeah, I mean, if a Charleston was fit, then you know you could yeah, make a case for it. Exactly, but he's not, and I just think Johnson and Werner are competing in that left wing. Kulisevsky doesn't really fill me with much excitement, so yeah, I think it's just kind of process elimination again, uh, Pedro Porro. And then rounding things off. Uh, so uh, so my next starting defender is going to be Doughty. Um, so 
I, th I think uh, Nottingham Forest and, and Luton has had the game of call. Again, Dowie's in there for the attacking threat. You know, he's, he's got the assist threat. He's got a bit of, bit of goal threat as well. And, you know, Forest is a good game for them. But at the same time, you know, Luton's a good game for Forest. Um, mm. So I've got, I've got to follow uh, for Forest, you know, uh, on my bench um, okay. as, as, as the fourth defender. So I think that game kind of could go either way. But as I was saying earlier, I'm just going for the defenders who I think, you know, not only have the highest clean sheet odds, but have got the attacking threat for the teams as well. Yeah, sure. And then let's round off the defence. Yeah, so the, the last defender I've got there is Kufal. Um, okay. Again, it's just a, a player who, who plays every every week who, who's who got, you know, attacking threat. He's going to be third on the bench. So I, I don't think I'll, I'll need him. Uh, well, hopefully not anyway. <laughs> if you need him and, and, and yeah. In a week like this, it's, it's, something's it's gone, gone very bad. badly wrong. It's gone really bad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. That That is one of the benefits of of, of having a bench and playing a, a, a free hit in yeah. a blank game week is that one injury, you're, you're covered, whereas people that are playing through, you know, they might have eight players maximum anyway. One injury to a big player and they're down to seven and it's it's looking very ropey. Yeah, but yeah, as you exactly. say, if Kufal's well, coming on, something's happened. Yeah, spot on. I mean, that is a, a very good advantage that free hitters have over um, non-free hitters. It's not only the fact that they're getting the more players out, but a full, a full bench there as well, just in case. Yeah. Um, okay. And that is the end of the defence. Uh, I should have mentioned actually as well that at the end of this, we're going to see the predicted points of this free hit team and the game week rating as well. Obviously, on a free hit chip, we should be able to get as close to 100% really as as, as possible. But you know, that's where, where Abdul's thoughts are going to be different to Fantasy Football Hub's algorithm. But if you want to put your own free hit team into the tool and, and see how you do you do with predictive points, gaming rating, then the link to do that for free is down below. Let's get into the midfield then. This is where it gets yeah. a little bit more fun. Yeah, so I've got, I've got Madison and Son there. Um, again, I think that them two will be the most popular defender, uh, popular midfielders uh, this this week. And we know whether you're on a free hit or not. Um, look, there's... There's the it's just kind of no brainer, isn't it? With Son, I think he's going to be my likely be my captain. The best option this week, you know, playing as a number nine. Um, I think Richarlison is still injured. He wasn't training last week, and and Madison, you know, is, is the next best option. Now we scored last week. He's got um, I think one goal and three assists. You know, since he came back from it from his injury, you know, he's ticking along nicely, and you know, it's, it's a great fixture. Yeah. So I mean, I, I don't think much more needs to be said on them two because I think they're just kind of automatic picks. Yeah. Absolutely. Also, a, a nice comment from Ange for for FPL owners saying we need Madison to be getting you know higher up the pitch and and be more active, I guess, in in the final third. And then you saw his goal as well. So quite an atypical Madison goal, really. Yeah. Getting right into the six yard box, yeah. getting his getting on the end of a, of a cross. So that that's what you want to see. Yeah, he was almost like as a number nine in in that position from from where he scored. I, mean, I don't think that's where he'll play, but I mean, like he's he's getting forward, he's making those kind of runs in the box, so it's encouraging. Okay, I think now is where it gets a little. There's there's scope, I think, in these sort of yeah. positions to to change things up. Let's be honest, the defense kind of picks itself. Really, you, you can go elsewhere, but there are only four fixtures, and you have picked the three most attacking defenders, which is what I expect a lot of people to do. Son obviously has to be in there. Madison will be in for most. Now I think it really depends on on how you're calling the fixtures yourself and just where you want to go with this. So who who are your who are your next midfielders? Okay, so I've got I've got Bo in there, and I think I'm gonna go with Bo. And even though I mean, like it's a home fixture, I know Villa. They have actually. I was looking at the defensive numbers, and Villa are actually pretty decent defensively. They're like, uh, you know, they've conceded the fifth least goals and also got the fifth best fifth best expected goals conceded. However, like since Paquette has came back, you know, um, West Ham have been a lot better going forward, and that's you know kind of um, resulted in Bowen's upturn in fortunes as well. You know, with his, with his hat trick and an assist in the last three. So, I just think he's a, he's a ninety minute player. Uh, he's kind of playing out of position. He's a midfielder in FPL, playing as a you know as a forward for the team. So, he's he's in there. I think he's a great option, despite the kind of tough fixture on paper. I think that game might end up being you know more high scoring than like a you know a kg affair yeah so for me bones in okay and who's next um so i've gone for bailey right and this is this is one of the positions in my team which i'm not too sure about because i think in that kind of fourth uh midfield spot you know there's there's a few options i mean i've gone for bailey i think uh you know he's he's got a goal and assist threat uh, he's the highest kind of goal threat in that villa team after after watkins 
but you know there's you know you could, you've got um Morgan Gibbs White in there you can you can get Paqueta you know possibly even like a Mohamed Kadus uh, if you want to double up on on the West Ham midfield Barkley Alanga you know there there's a few options there um so Bailey's not kind of set in stone yet but for me right now I think he's the best option just looking through predicted points uh, this game week and it does look like you've chosen the the four midfielders so far that do have the highest predicted points for yes. 429 so that's uh, that's good to see. Again, there aren't like, there aren't loads of options, and and people that aren't on free hit will, will, you know, be saying, really, do I want to be going to free hit to get a player that's got in in, in Bailey four point six predicted points? But you mm -hmm. never know. You never know. They could do well, and it means you don't have to carry them as well, which is which is one of the benefits. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, it's 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 one of those where it's like, it's it's more of a, you know, bringing your ceiling, uh, bringing your floor up rather than. Yeah. Bringing high ceiling um it's just kind of covering that you know covering the game weeks around it so yeah everyone's in a different position so it's just i, I know we, we see this every week but it's, it's just team dependent <laughs> <laughs> there it is that's the magic one <laughs> that's the magic yeah, there we go i was waiting for that yeah. i was waiting for that yeah all right um now i presume maybe wrongly that you're that you're doing three up top yeah yeah i'm, I'm okay. going for um so the, the last midfielder i've got douglas louise on the bench okay as my first midfielder i mean look the douglas louise is even good enough to play but I just think with with McGinn out, um, he'll probably be playing a bit deeper. Mm. Um, so I think that's enough to kind of um, you know, leave him on the bench. But you know, I think a lot a lot of people who, I mean, he's one player who who I think could really bite the guys on the free hit because the guys who are not free hitting are going to have probably Douglas Louise as their starter, and you know, all it takes is a penalty or an yeah. assist, and he's got three bonus points. It's true. Surely now though, an open play, he. he... Because when Kamara uh, obviously was out the team, everyone thought he then might have to drop back, but it was actually kind of McGinn that was was doing yeah. that. But now that he's out, as you say, surely now Douglas Louise will have to drop in. I think don't, so. I think we're never got, sure, but yeah, I mean, I think we kind of, I think it's kind of sensible to assume that he will. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know, like he doesn't have many many uh, returns away from home, does he? So I don't know. Surely that's a you, you can see it as a sort of negative as to where. Yes, he's on pens and mm -hmm. that could ruin the free hit. But you also have to go, you have to chase a little bit of upside, don't you? Yeah, I think if you're on a free hit, you've you've got to kind of go for the upside, as you just said. I think, um, you know, Bailey, you know, despite his, you know, kind of Louise's kind of latest scores, he scored a brace a few weeks ago. I think Bailey has is the guy with the upside still. Okay, let's get into the forwards then. Um, so the first two forwards I'll go, I think, Again, I think a lot of people are going to have them as Tony and Watkins. Tony will probably be my vice captain this week. You know, possibly even you know. I think for me this week, Son and Tony are the best captaincy options. You know, Tony's got the best fixture. Uh, Burnley, uh, he's on penalties, ninety minute man. But I just think Son has got the you know the, the kind of advantage of the assists. I know he's also like a midfielder in FPL playing as as the number nine. But yeah, Tony's totally nailed in the team. Uh, and and so is Watkins. I think those two are, are, are the two best forwards uh, this week. Um, and my third forward this week, I've currently this is another position which is up for grabs, uh, is Morris. And I think that's a position okay. where like, um, so again, look, it's just like a simple option in terms of he's nailed to start. Uh, he's on penalties. You know, he's up against. A, a, he's got a decent fixture. You know, it's a decent decent. You know, Luton aren't going to get you know many better fixtures than Nottingham Forest this season, so it's a winnable game for them. But again, in that position, I think you know there's there's options that we can go for. I mean, we've got like of Wood, uh, you know, Chris Wood, who's who, who's got a hat trick already this season, so he's got that he's got that in him. And you know, again for for Forest, you know, there's not many better fixtures than than Luton, so it's a good fixture for them. I think Muniz uh, from Fulham is is a decent show, and for Fana for Burnley is is a decent show as well. He's actually started uh, the last. He's he's played ninety minutes in the last five games. He's got three goals uh, in, in five starts this season. So he's actually a really, really good player. Um, just really not playing for for a, you know, a very good team. But, mm. you know, again, Brentford at home, it, it's it's a... Uh, it's it's a game which which Burnley will think you know this is a winnable game for us. Yeah, I think I think they'll go for it. So there's a, there's a few differentials there, and Morris is who have got in the team at the moment. But again, that position isn't isn't um solid yet. It's it's not it's not confirmed. Yeah, I do think a lot of it is just down to how you see a certain fixture going. Because if there if there were better options than like Flecken in goal, I'd definitely go away from that because I I'd be I'd be confident that Burnley would score in that game, and I wouldn't be yeah. shocked if they won that game as you just said. It's it is a good fixture for them. And yeah, Fafana's playing really well right now. I mean, the goal that he scored in the last game, it has to give him a lot of confidence just oh. to be able to just 
spank it in like that. I, I, at this stage, I'm happy that he's he's a he's a Chelsea player. To be fair, it's, it's um potentially interesting down the line. Who knows? Yeah. Anyway, that is the team. I'm gonna I'm gonna click optimize down here just so we get the best players in according mm. to the predicted points. And the game rating is 98. percent Not bad. 98. But it's not bad, but it's not 100. Yeah. It's not 100. So we're going to see in a second how it could yeah. be improved. But yeah. um, overall, predicted points 59.2. If I offered you that now, do you think that would warrant using the chip? You know, obviously obviously in this week, yes. But over the, the course of your planning, 59.2, is that enough of a, a points gain over probable non-free hitters? I mean, like the, the only way we're going to find out is once the game week 34 uh, um, is done and dusted. Um, yeah. But, you know, 59 points, it, it, you know, it could be a 20 point loss or it could be like a 40 point gain. You, ne you never know. I think the only way we're going to find out is once, you know, Game Week 34 has been has, has played out. So, yeah, I, I can't say it on the, on the amount of points, but with that team there, you know, 59 points does sound good uh, yeah. with those players. So, um, I, would, I would probably take it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'd take that as well, to be fair. It looks, looks very, very solid. Okay, mate. So, as you can see on screen now, I've, uh, I've put together a little team that has a 100% gaming rating. Now, it's very similar to your team. It only has, what, one more predicted point. So it's really not the end of the world. And you have your reasons for going for certain players. But I do just want to talk about the players that the Fantasy Football Hub are recommending here over the players you've chosen. Very minimal differences, of course. But we can then speak about other options that you might have considered or are still thinking about. In goal, interestingly, Kaminsky is the highest predicted point scorer of the keepers this week, which is... I don't know. Do you want to double up on the Luton defense at home to Forest? Probably not. But then again, he is good for save points. Yes, he he, yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah, I think Flecken away, points. as I said, I like Flecken away at, and you said Flecken away at Burnley. Mm. Is there much chance of a clean there? You'd say potentially, yeah, but Burnley look okay now going forward, especially with Fafana in the team, who's also come in ahead of Morris. Which yeah. is uh, which is crazy. I guess the algorithm just not really fancying Luton as much at the moment. Yeah, I think so. I think, and I think the the home fixture has probably got something to do with it as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, look, I think the goalkeeper position in general is like one of the most random positions. Um, and and yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't really kind of be against going in for any goalkeeper this you know this week. Um, it's just one of those where you, as you were saying earlier, it's it's about I think in these small kind of scenario situations it's how you think the game's going to go if you think that game is going to be you know where Luton are going to concede a lot of shots on on, on goal then you know Kaminsky is going to get a lot of save points so yeah I think the, the, the save points in the home fixture is, is putting them up there yeah, from, from the tool. Now Poro has dropped out the team as well which um, I can kind of understand I think he is going to be in the majority the vast majority of of uh, free hits with Richarlison's injury but it's kind of what I was like hoping for earlier what i was saying earlier fulham are really fulham are just good fulham are just a good yeah. team they score they score a decent amount of goals especially at home fully expect them to score in that game whereas there are other there are other defenders where the clean sheet is perhaps a little bit more likely i don't know also poro is not as not as good now going forward you know the, the kind of the role change since madison has come back into the team less less set pieces that sort of thing mm -hmm. so i yeah. don't know Poro, Poro missing out, which is which is interesting. And then the final point really is that, um, well, I guess there are two points. One of them, which which non-free hitters will love to see, is mm -hmm. that Charlie Taylor has made his way into the team. A player that us free hitters, a lot of us, are going to be free hitting yeah. out, despite the fact that he has a fixture. What do you think about that? I, I just think it, it, it's written that Charlie Taylor is going to be the highest scoring player in, in Game <laughs> 29. If he comes away with a 15-pointer and just ruins all our free hits, God, it'll just be peak be... FPL, but... That would, I mean, the way this game week's gone, um, yeah, so far. I mean, yeah. I, I guess there, there have there has been like obviously a little bit of uh, revival this game week with Palmer and 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 Son, but yeah, it's just it's going to be typical FPL if if Charlie Taylor's the highest scoring keep, uh, player in game week twenty nine. And then finally, it's Collins who's who's come in instead of Roslev. Now that is to do okay. with, I guess, just purely predicted points, and that Collins has nailed Roslev. Guess the minutes, yeah perhaps isn't as nailed but that is where i think you know your own kind of perception of of, of the game it comes into yeah into you know is, is more important because you know about 
but the likelihood of him starting and also just yeah his his attacking upside and for Fafana as well um, I've just noticed Fafana yeah Fafana as well in the first, over Morris I I, do we know is, who the um, Burnley penalty taker is well um I was I was speaking about this earlier actually on on um on one of the discords FPL discord channels I'm in I think Burnley fans think it will be Fafana I mean it's, it's, it's obviously Jay Rodriguez who is the main penalty taker oh, okay, but yeah. Um, he might not play, and I'm not sure if he's injured or or if he's you know not in the starting eleven. But um, a lot of fans do think it'll be Fafana. But again, that's just fan speculation. We don't know for sure, but I think there's a decent chance he'll take them because he's been great. He's you know he's 90 minutes in the last five games. Company, surely you know he he, he trusts them. You know, with um, which can be kind of evident in the in the minutes that he's given him. So mm. wouldn't be surprised at all if he's on pens. Fafana over Morris, especially if Morris blanks again. Wednesday night, this might be tempt. I might really tempt me, you know. That really might. I think that third striker slot is the is the one that's most up for grabs across the entire team. Yeah, I think so. And I just think, um, I I don't think you know Fafana over Morris is, is a huge gamble, really. No. Um, you know, if you're looking at the, the quality of the the two teams and the attack, I think Fafana is the better player. Um, but Morris has got has got the penalties. Um, that we know for sure. Mm. Whereas you know Fafana might have them. Very interesting. Very interesting stuff. Mm. One final question uh, from me is, how do you feel about ha um, having players that play each other on, on free hit? Because a lot of people say, uh, just, you know, chase upside and go for, kind of like try and predict the fixture, I guess, and just go for the team that you think you're going to win. So don't have a, an attacker against a goalkeeper in the same fixture, that sort of thing. Do you think that that's a reasonable like, strategy or do you think that sometimes it's better to hedge? Um, no, I think, I mean, it's, it's one of those where, look, if, if you're going all out for like you know not playing you know what what not wanting your players to play against each other that's where the, the real high upside is um but if you're just going for the players who you think are going to play uh you know who, the players who you think are just going to get the most points you know regardless of who they're playing looking at them as individual assets then you know if, if you play that strategy over 10 game weeks you're probably allowed you know you're going to score more points on average whereas you know if you Whereas that strategy of going all in on you know two or three teams, um, you're either gonna it's either gonna go big or you're gonna it's gonna go bust. Um, so it just depends on your risk appetite. I prefer just to go for the players personally who I think of who are you know gonna score the most points yeah. on like a, on an individual basis because uh, that's what I do throughout the season. Um, because look, you've got Madison playing, for example, you know if you, if you've got uh, Porto against Fulham. And you know the film forward as well, Muniz. Yeah, you know, he, he, he's he's a good option. He he could do he could get a goal in that game, and you know Porto could get an assist in that game. So you know it's happened before. Yeah. So that's why I personally prefer to play. But I do understand, and and I do see why people go for you know the the, the kind of all in approach. Okay, so there we go. That is uh that was your team, and then the, the I guess the the highest rated team according to to Fantasy Football Hub. Very interested to see what you do end up doing come deadline. And if people want to know what, what your, your final locked in free hit 29 team is, then that's available on the website, link down below. Again, if you want to do what we've done in this entire video yourself with your free hit team and see how it comes out, see if you can beat Abdul's 98%. Uh, there are also other iterations of, of players that you can fill in here to, to get above 98%, to be fair. There, as you can see, the predicted points are, are super close. So there are different sort of a uh, combination you can you can get to to really high predicted points with and the link to do that is down below as again as i said again that is that is free so you know just click the link go and enjoy it. abdul thank you mate good luck thank this you. week and uh good luck to everyone who is free hitting or not just just good luck and hopefully we can all get a green arrow cheers guys